In this video, we are going to talk about the world in 2050 in the new ERA of humankind, so before starting this video, please like this video, and subscribe to our channel for the future updates. Predictions about the future tend to overestimate the speed of technological development in the short term. Such development is never a leap forward, rather a smooth, gradual, complex process that unfolds over a relatively long period of time. In 2050, humankind will see improved current technologies, not fundamentally new ones. The process of introducing environmentally friendly technologies will be gradual, and not ubiquitous. Medicine will not make any significant breakthroughs, but there will be incremental progress. Average life expectancy is set to increase by two years. The implementation of advanced technologies will happen faster in some countries. There will be a significant rise in social and financial stratification. Large cities will grow and population density will increase. The most technologically and economically advanced countries will engage in a new space race and new crewed missions to the moon. Technologies will progress stepwise. By 2050, these changes will have transformed human life. The goal of TWI 2050 is to provide fact-based knowledge to support the policy process and implementation of the SDGs. TWI 2050 aims to address the full spectrum of transformational challenges related to achieving the 17 SDGs in an integrated manner, so as to minimize potential conflicts among them and reap the benefits of potential synergies of achieving them in unison. Here's a list of the the world in 2050 in the new ERA of humankind let's start. Child mortality rates will be vastly lower. During the 20th century, the sharpest decline in mortality involved deaths of children under 5 years old, according to the assessment on human health from the Copenhagen Consensus on Human Challenge. However, the pace of decline has been rapid in low- and middle-income countries, especially since 1950, that report said. Between 1990 and 2012, the number of under 5 child deaths went from 90 deaths per 1,000 live births to 48 deaths per 1,000 live births, according to a 2013 report from UNICEF. The Copenhagen report found these trends are likely to continue, with the rate dropping to 31 per 1,000 live births in 2050 and even more dramatic declines in regions like Africa. The factors behind this decline include prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, immunization against diseases, insecticide-treated nets to control diseases like malaria, and micronutrients for children to prevent life-threatening deficiencies. We will have vaccines and cures for many diseases. While we can't know what will threaten our bodies in the future, cures and vaccines for current diseases and illnesses will surely improve by 2050. Researchers are confident that within 20 years they can design a vaccine to stop the spread of HIV, which currently kills anywhere from 1.5 million to 2 million people per year. That's according to Martin Wiesk, consultant in infectious diseases at the University Hospitals of Leicester NHS Trust, as reported in the Daily Mirror. To be sure, we've had troubles coming up with a traditional vaccine to prevent HIV in the past. However, scientists are making big strides in understanding how our immune system interacts with the virus. While treatment already exists for malaria, which kills 1 million people a year, many organizations are working to eradicate the disease entirely. Some remain hopeful for a vaccine, while others go to the source by genetically engineering mosquitoes carrying the parasite to self-destruct. A better understanding of the processes behind Alzheimer's bring us closer and closer to a cure. A US vaccine already exists for meningitis, which other countries will soon adopt. As for cancer, we're making progress in treating some types. A rheumatoid arthritis drug recently cured a young child's leukemia. A modified measles vaccine put another woman's cancer into remission. Nanoparticles could even attack cancer stem cells, which cause tumors to form. Others are trying to teach the body to attack cancer directly, by training the immune system with cancer vaccines. Humans could be live forever as computerized brains. In the coming decades, some scientists hope to upload the contents of human brains into computers, allowing people to live forever inside a robotic body or even as a hologram. Neuroscientist Randall Koene and Russian financial backer Dmitry Itskov are trying to transfer human consciousness and brain functions to an artificial body by 2045 by mapping the brain, reducing its activity to computations, and reproducing those computations in code, according to Popular Science. Koene said his work isn't just about achieving immortality. It's about giving people the ability to go places and do things that are impossible in our own bodies, like traveling close to the sun. Even if we don't meet that goal by 2050, people alive today may still have their brains uploaded in the future. 
That's because other scientists are working on preserving human brains and all their contents indefinitely through immersion in chemical solutions. If we could put the brain into a state in which it does not decay, then the second step could be done 100 years later, and everyone could experience mind uploading firsthand, scientist Kenneth Hayworth, of the Brain Preservation Foundation, told Popular Science. Hayworth believes scientists may discover how to preserve a mouse brain by 2015. There will be no more poor countries. By 2035, there will be no more poor countries, Bill Gates wrote earlier this year. By 2050, the development of countries around the world will be that much further along. Already 700 million fewer people lived in extreme poverty in 2010 than they did in 1990, and the rate of improvement has also slowly increased since the turn of the century. Extreme poverty was defined as $1 day in 1990 but was redefined as $1.25 a day in 2008. Today, the World Bank has set a new goal, lowering the number of people living in extreme poverty to no more than 3% of the population by 2030. Gates says increased foreign aid will play a key role in eradicating poverty on a global scale. Jeffrey D. Sachs, special advisor to the United Nations Secretary General, calls for new kind of mixed capitalism to eliminate poverty, combining disease control, public education, and the promotion of new science and technology with private market forces. He points to parts of Africa where the introduction of cell phones combined with better malaria control have slashed rural poverty. If the lagging countries can maintain a sustainable higher growth path, the global poverty ratio will fall from about 21% in 2005 to less than 2.5% in 2050, and the number of people living in absolute poverty will decline by another billion, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organizations. To be sure, the future holds threats for impoverished people in the world. Global climate change is already threatening the homes and livelihoods of people in places like Panama and a once lively fishing community in England. Time will tell whether the continued focus on eradicating poverty will outweigh the detrimental impact of climate change. Artificial intelligence will be insanely good. The rise of artificial intelligence AI, could generally be a good thing, assuming there isn't a terminator scenario. While robots could replace some workers, it's important to remember that past innovations have unlocked whole new industries and new jobs along with them. The rise of AI could do the same. What's more, think how much better robots could make our world. Hans. Moravec of Carnegie Mellon University's Robotics Institute predicts that by 2050 freely moving robots that outperform humans both physically and intellectually will run entire businesses by themselves. That could allow humans to occupy their days with a variety of social, recreational and artistic pursuits, not unlike today's comfortable retirees or the wealthy leisure classes, he wrote in Scientific American. It could also lead to new breakthroughs, as mass-produced, fully educated robot scientists working diligently, cheaply, rapidly and increasingly effectively will ensure that most of what science knows in 2050 will have been discovered by our artificial progeny. Robots could also provide people with emotional sustenance. And love and sex with robots AI researcher David Levy predicted that by 2050 there would be human-like robots with their own emotions and the capability to hold intelligent conversations and, yes, relationships with people. Is this the ultimate sex toy? Levy wrote in New Scientist. It could be considered as such, but the sophisticated sex robots of the middle of this century will also be valued as relationship partners in the idlest sense of the word, someone to love. As advanced as they may be, Levy still envisions robots sitting in the corner in your house waiting for you to decide what you'd like to do next rather than living independent lives of their own. We will have the ability to rely almost exclusively on renewable, clean energy. If the world invests enough in clean energy, we will be able to rely almost entirely on renewable energy by 2050, cutting energy sector greenhouse gas emissions by 80%, according to a World Wildlife Fund WWF, report. IT is technically feasible to supply everyone on the planet in 2050 with the energy they need, with 95% of this energy coming from renewable sources, the report said. The report stresses, however, that this will only be possible if we sufficiently commit ourselves now to work toward that goal. The achievement of that goal does not demand radical changes to the way we live, according to the WWF report. The changes involve technologies already available, won't cost more than 2% of global GDP, and take into account increases in population and travel. Solar energy, now comprising only 0.02% of the world's energy supply, could provide half of the world's electricity, half of building heating, and 15% of industrial heat and fuel in 2050, according to the report, which relies on findings from ECOFs. Wind energy, which currently supplies only 2% of the world's electricity, 
could provide 25% of the world's electricity by 2050. Although that requires an additional million onshore and 100,000 offshore wind turbines, they will have low environmental impact with proper planning, such as development of turbines that float on water. Other crucial sources of renewable energy will include ocean power that harnesses energy from waves and tides, biomass, which includes plant materials and animal waste, geothermal energy derived from the Earth's crust, and hydropower. Investment in all of these technologies is crucial. Combining power from all of these sources will be important in creating our clean energy future. Cars could be vastly safer, smarter, and cleaner. In the next decade, major car makers expect to release cars with self-driving features, such as steering, parking, gear shifting, and braking, the Milken Institute predicts. Experts say most driverless cars will operate entirely without a human occupant's control by 2035. Driverless cars will be safer because they can draft closely behind other vehicles and eliminate human error, which causes 90% of car accidents, according to the Milken Institute. In the US, driverless cars could result annually in 4.95 million fewer accidents, 30,000 fewer deaths, and 4.8 billion fewer commuting hours. They will also save Americans $500 billion per year in costs of car accidents, fuel, and lost productivity, according to the Milken Institute. In the meantime, confidence in driverless cars is growing. 57% of people worldwide, and 60% of Americans, trust them. Electric cars will also be widespread by 2050 a tremendous benefits for the environment. Worldwide annual production of electric vehicles will reach 7 million by 2020 and 100 million by 2050, according to Enel Italy's largest power company. That will reduce CO2 emissions from transportation by 30%, in addition to significantly reducing oil consumption. In the US, half of vehicles will be electrified by 2050, totaling 157 million electric cars and light trucks, according to the Rocky Mountain Institute. Greater gender equality will improve the global economy and society. In 1900, lower pay for women and their exclusion from the work sector led to losses equaling 17% of global GDP, according to a report by Copenhagen Consensus on Human Challenges. That's because women's full potential for productivity was never realized. But in 2050, those losses are predicted to fall to just 4% of world GDP. R. Ising wages and rising female participation in the labor force rise hand in hand, implying that there are gains to the society from women's movement into the paid work sector at these times, the study's author, Joyce Jacobson, said in the report, the rising participation of women in the workforce will continue to change dynamics at home. In 2050, men and women in much of the developed world will do an equal share of childcare and housework, according to an Oxford University study of 16 European and North American countries, in addition to Australia and Israel. Almost all adults will know how to read. Currently, 23.6% of the global population can't read, costing about 7% of worldwide GDP, according to a scorecard for humanity, a report from the Copenhagen Consensus Center. By 2050, experts estimates that illiteracy rates will fall to just 12% and cost only about 3.8% of GDP. Few indicators measure progress better than literacy, and basic human capital theory holds that a greater number of educated people will improve a country's economy. For example, differences in education help explain why Korea, with 12 years of schooling, saw a 23-fold growth in per capita income since 1950, while Pakistan, with much less publication education, has seen only three-fold growth. At this point, the world knows literacy matters. Many nonprofits and humanitarian groups focus on bringing an understanding of the written word to the world. The next X Prize award will also go toward ending illiteracy entirely. There may be much less warfare worldwide. From 2009 to 2050, the number of countries involved in internal armed conflicts will decrease by more than 50%, according to a report from International Studies Quarterly. The prediction applies to internal armed conflicts pitting governments against organized opposition groups, which are deadlier and longer-lasting than other conflicts, the report's co-author University of Oslo political science professor Havard Hegra told Time. The study predicted that, in 2050, 7% of countries will be embroiled in internal armed conflicts, down from 15% in 2009. Hegra's prediction is based on a statistical model that considered factors like education, infant mortality, past conflicts, oil, ethnicities, and youth population. In another report, Hegra considered the impact of climate change on future civil wars. He concluded that its adverse effects are still unlikely to be sufficiently strong to dramatically change the projected global trends in conflict. Reasons for the decline of violence include more education and the high cost of war. 
It has become too expensive to kill people, Hegra told Apollon. Modern society is dependent on economic development. It is too expensive to use violence to destroy this network. Warfare associated with the Arab Spring has led Hegra to raise his prediction of the percentage of countries expected to be involved in internal armed conflict in 2050, from 5% to 7%, according to Apollon. India, Nigeria, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Tanzania will be at the greatest risk of armed conflict in 2050. Matt Ridley, author of The Rational Optimist, How Prosperity Evolves, also believes there will be a future decline in war. As he told the World Future Society, I think it very unlikely that war will go extinct. Human nature will see to that. It's true, however, that the 2000s were the decade with the lowest number of war deaths since 1945, according to Steven Pinker. I do expect the decline of violence and war to continue. War will be rare but not absent. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.